Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Sandra and I make videos all about cybersecurity topics as well as careers in technology. And today I wanted to cover a very hot topic that's been in the air for the last week or so and it is the log4j vulnerability. So if you work in cybersecurity or are a web developer or some kind of software developer, you have likely heard about the log4j vulnerability and have been working to fix it the past week or so. And in this video, I just wanted to give a high level overview of the vulnerability, what log4j actually is and what it does, how attackers can take advantage of this vulnerability, mitigations for it that are recommended by Apache, as well as different internal mitigations that some companies have implemented. And also just what this means for different open source technologies out there that a lot of companies and applications are relying on with very widespread use. Okay, so first things first, what is log4j? Log4j is basically an Apache software that is used to log different events that happen in Java-based applications. Since it is part of the Apache Software Foundation, it is open source and free to use, and it is very, very commonly used in many organizations. You may even be using it for your own applications, and it's really just used for logging different user activities and events, and it's one of the easiest ways to log activities, which is why so many people use it. But essentially it's just a logging library that is created by apache and one of the reasons why log4j is so popular is because it enables logging at runtime without affecting the actual application binary and that basically just means you have a very lightweight library that can be used for logging and it won't affect the actual speed or performance of your application and you also have a lot of control into what goes into the output of, of whatever log files that your logs are dumping to okay so now you know the very high level basics of what log4j actually is and why people use it and why it's so commonly use in many many different organizations. So now let's go into the actual vulnerability of log4j and how attackers can potentially take advantage of this exploit. So essentially this exploit allows attackers to perform remote code execution which is one of the very big no-nos in cybersecurity especially as a very high risk high severity vulnerability. Remote code execution basically means that someone else in a different computer somewhere else in the world can run their own code, run their own software, maybe even install and run ransomware, which is one of the really big risks of leaving this exploit unfixed for many organizations. And with remote code execution, an attacker can also take advantage of your device, which also means that they can steal data as well as install different types of malware that aren't just ransomware. And this, of course, is very bad because that basically means that attackers, especially nation states that are taking advantage of this exploit right now as companies are scrambling to fix it, they are finding that they have remote access and remote code execution abilities in many different systems across many different large tech companies, financial companies, government and healthcare companies. So it's definitely a very, very widespread risk. And after having a brief discussion with one of with one of my ethical hacking mentors, she actually gave this vulnerability a 10 out of 10 in terms of severity and based on how easy it is for someone to take advantage of it. Because you can likely find script kitties trying to find trying to find pre-packaged and pre-built code out there to take advantage of this vulnerability, and they can use that to their advantage. So the level of sophistication to to use or take advantage of this exploit is not very high, and the severity of it, which is remote code execution, is very very high. So this is like a 10 out of 10 in terms of dangerous exploits and vulnerabilities. So I read a few different articles about how hackers are taking advantage of the log4j vulnerability, specifically how they hacked into systems to use them for crypto mining, as well as developing malware to create large scale denial of service attacks, or essentially creating their own botnets. And of course, ransomware is one of the very big scares of this vulnerability. And I actually made a video a few months ago that had a lot more to do with ransomware. It technically is very old in terms of cyber news, but I think that can give you an idea of the severity of this vulnerability. But for those who may not be familiar, ransomware is when an attacker or a malicious threat actor is able to get into your system install some kind of software that locks up or basically encrypts all of your files and they won't give you the key to decrypt them until you pay some kind of fee usually it's through a cryptocurrency like bitcoin and then they will provide the key and unencrypt your data but usually that doesn't delete the actual software for ransomware and they could continuously keep doing that every few months and sometimes you're left with no choice but to pay the fee especially if you have important data which i would assume most companies and organizations do on their employees computers especially on servers and they can't just have that data locked up encrypted and never to be used again and oftentimes these ransomware attackers are giving them a are giving them a deadline usually it's a few days or a week and they tell you you have to send this money by a certain time so there's that sense of pressure so it's very difficult to combat a ransomware attacker especially when they already have their software on your servers and machines 
Okay, so that's kind of the gist of why this attack is is so insidious because of the relative ease of how you can execute this attack. Like I mentioned earlier, if you're just a script kitty, you can easily take advantage of this attack and because of the severity of this exploit, which is very, very high because of the prospects of remote code execution that allows you to install any software on the target machine. It allows you to run anything you would like. It allows you to take advantage of the machine, steal data, install ransomware, so many different bad things that could happen. And what's even worse is that so many different thousands and thousands of applications and websites on the internet use Log4j for so many different things, whether it's for logging or debugging or any other purposes. There is a very, very large list of applications that use Log4j and a lot of them include the big tech companies like Amazon, Google, as well as international companies like Baidu. So it's definitely an attack that affects, that affects companies and organizations across the globe at a very large scale that, that people haven't seen in a long time. So I do want to go into the more nitty gritty details of the attack for anyone who's interested because I know you've heard about it at a high level, it allows for remote code execution, but I also like to know how they are able to, especially for developers out there who have to understand the more in-depth technical details of what they're actually doing and what they're taking advantage of. But essentially Log4j, specifically version 2.15, there's a certain configuration that is non-default that allows attackers to take advantage of whatever applications or websites that Log4j is used on. And this allowed attackers to have control over certain input data when the login configurations use a certain pattern layout. So either a contact lookup or a thread context map. So they can basically use this to create some malicious input using specific patterns. So the main issue here is that log4j allows lookups to appear in log messages. So this means that whenever a user input is logged, and if that user input contained a JNDI lookup to some malicious threat actors endpoint, then log4j would still resolve to that lookup. It could connect to that server and it could download some serialized Java code from that server. And afterwards, this code could be executed when deserialized, which essentially makes up the remote code execution attack. So in terms of mitigation, Apache did release a new version of, of the log4j software library. So it is definitely advised to download and upgrade to the latest patch, the latest upgrade on their website. And this new version disables access to JNDI by default. So now if you want to use the JNDI configuration, you need to enable that explicitly. And the message lookup features have also been completely removed. So a very high level overview of what I just explained is that an attacker can basically perform remote code execution by sending some specifically crafted log messages to your application that uses log4j. Hence the name of this vulnerability or zero day exploit log for shell, which is kind of a funny play on words. So I also wanted to give an example of how this essentially works, especially for developers out there who, who are trying to wrap their head around whether or not their applications are vulnerable to this exploit. But likely if you are using Log4j version 2.15 and you have not patched, then you likely are. But let's just say you have a web application and you are using Log4j for logging, for debugging purposes. Basically this exploit can be taken advantage of anytime a certain type of expression is seen in your logs as your log input. Basically, whenever a certain type of expression is found, Java looks up the value of that expression and replaces it. Some examples of those lookups are JNDI, which we talked about earlier, Sys and Java, etc. And these are very commonly used, especially when you're using expressions for environment variables. And one key thing to know about JNDI lookups is that they also support certain protocols like LDAP, DNS, RMI. And these can allow an attacker to inject some JNDI expressions into your log file. The most common way that attackers are doing this is through HTTP requests to your server. So with that HTTP request, the Java lookup method could then download and execute whatever malicious code was sent to the server. And the saddest thing is that all the attacker really has to send is just a few lines, if anything, just one line, one expression, and that will cause your web server to run whatever malicious code is stored at their malicious website or wherever they're hosting their malicious code. So whether it's ransomware attackers, nation states, script kitties, random people, random people on Twitter who are finding out about this exploit and trying to test it out and take advantage of it in some way is one of the most high severity vulnerabilities that have been found in a long time. And what makes it even more dangerous is, is the fact that it's so widespread and it's so many different government entities, private sectors, institutions use Log4j. Even just everyday people like you or me who have their own web applications or servers, if you're using Log4j, then this is definitely a vulnerability you want to pay attention to. Definitely patch the latest upgrades, definitely make whatever changes that are needed to your application that may be reliant on Log4j capabilities. And corporations out there are trying their best to get this fixed and patched as much as possible to derail the amount of risk that comes with this vulnerability. 
All right, so that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think about this vulnerability, any of your thoughts on this vulnerability, anything you would like to add. And also let me know in the comments below if you have any other security topics that you would like me to cover. I do enjoy making these topics specifically for more widespread vulnerabilities like SolarWinds as well as now log for shell And I know these are also a bit more time sensitive. So yeah, let me know in the comments below what you guys think about videos like this since I will be moving towards more informational videos and away from my work vlog videos as I eventually go back into the office. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesday at 2 p.m. and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Bye.